Okay, so we now have the log clamped up here. And what we're going to do is we're now going to plane that edge smooth. I've already done a little bit, but I need to chew it up a little bit more. So that's my setup. <laughs> Very simple. And we'll get that edge squared up and we'll see what happens next. Here is my log that I've created. Let's see if we can zoom in there. There you go. And it ends up being about 30 and a quarter inch in length, this whole piece here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, cut it up into three 10 inch lengths and then stack it up on top of each other. And then what I'm going to do is um, we are going to cut, this is set at 25 degrees, we are going to cut uh, 25 degree angle strips off of this. And um, that's gonna create our little half herringbone or, or wheat pattern or whatever you wanna call it in our rosette. Twenty-five degree angle. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so I've marked on here the twenty-five degree angle, and if I uh, measure it with my um, caliper here um it's about 875 thousandths which is about um seven eighths of an inch so the 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 when i do cut the strips off here if i just leave it at this thickness here which let's let's see what this is so it's uh about 375 is the thickness here, 375 thousandths. So if I leave it at that, that I'll have that 7 8 inch uh, strip. But um, I'm going to triple that so I, I get one that's pretty long. I've now uh, cut my 30 inch strip into three 10 inch strips. Got them clamped up here. Now you notice I have them at an angle. The reason for that is this line right here Let's see if you can get that in the camera there we go that line is 25 degree angles that's what I'm going to cut off there when I make my half herring bones here so from each end it's about seven eighths of an inch so I've drawn a line here and that's where I'm going to glue each one of these this way we'll get the the most yield of these strips off of this uh, entire block Okay, so my next step is to clamp this up and we'll take it from there. So one thing I want to say before we do the actual glue up is I saved the end cuts here because what I'm going to do, those are going to go right in between here to reinforce that part when I clamp it. So that'll, that'll add some clamping pressure right here. And so I'll do that on uh, both sides here. I'll insert that right there add a clamp there and that'll push this part on there all right it's time for the glue up i have my my cutoffs here that i'll be using to help fill in the gaps when i clamp clamp let's take the first one here here's my line get my glue on there here's my other one up to the line and I'm just 
just gonna spread that with my finger here. Get some good coverage there. Spread out. And I line those up to each line there. My clamping cowl. Now what I'm gonna do, because uh, I know these are gonna wanna move around a little bit, I'm going to use these spring clamps. Just kind of help everything to tack up. up some of that glue squeeze out so everything is tacking up right now so it's not going to slide around too much go ahead and take my cutoffs I'm gonna place those in there This is going to seem kind of crazy, but I'm going to use these really big clamps on the ends here. Because I like how I'm going to get all this uh, nice clamping pressure there. Do it slowly so things don't start slipping around. Same on this other end. Yeah, things aren't moving around, so that's good. take these clamps off you can see the squeeze out here start adding these other ones here These middle ones are going to have three of these four inch clamps. Whatever works for your jig or your clamping uh, calls. Just monitoring the squeeze out line. It's looking good. I don't want to use a damp cloth because I'm afraid that'll curl up the ends of the, the veneer there. And this last one here in the middle. And we'll be all set here. All right, here is my block all glued up 
And now I've made this jig here with the 25 degree angle. Here's the stop, which I'll show you how I use that a little bit later. But we're gonna put this on the bandsaw, get this on there, and then I don't know if you can see that line right there. We're gonna cut that. Then we're just gonna cut uh, blocks off this side here. Okay, off to the bandsaw. All right, here we go. Here's the jig in the bandsaw. our cut after the bandsaw. So now we have our reference edge. This is how I cut them. It's on the sled. Here we go. <laughs> So now it's going to be this thick piece, and you'll see why. Okay, here are all of our blocks that we've made, cut. So I've got them lined up here, so they're about uh, 18 inches in length total here. So our next step is to glue those all up. I was going to try another method where I cut them into these 40 thousandths thick strips but I had some issues with the consistency after I did about four or five of them. For some reason, they just kept getting thinner and thinner. Uh, the curving, I'm not too worried about. I can actually still use these that are consistent and I can cut them into little uh, like two millimeter strips and then just use each one and glue it into the channel for the rosette. So I'll save these there. That warpage is no big deal. It's not gonna affect anything. But that's why I'm changing to the thicker ones, because what we're going to end up doing is something like this. Create a log that'll, that'll create these, uh, this little decoration here, half herringbone or whatever you want to call that. Okay, here I have already glued up some of the, the pieces, the, these little wedges here. And I, I made uh, out of mahogany or whatever scrap you have, you're gonna make an end piece that's gonna go on the end of each one of these. I haven't, oh, here's one right here. You're gonna glue that on there. Now what I do to glue uh, each one of these pieces together is I use uh, super glue. So I'll put super glue on this one side and then the other one I'll put it on there, then I'll either uh, hold it by hand, lay it on its edge here so we get a nice straight log, and then I'll take a, a spring clamp, and I'll spring clamp that together. There we go. Like that. So once you've done that, you'll get something get in the sunlight <laughs> it looks like this and then we're gonna true this up okay, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna glue this last one on I got one hand on the camera so I, I have to stop the camera and, and do it but you'll see it when it's complete and okay, I'm gonna run this the log here thickness it on my Gilbert fitness sander. Let's see if I can do it with one hand. I do not recommend this. Get it. There you go. All right.
right, we now have our uh, purfling uh, strip, herring, half herringbone strip, all thicknessed. It's about maybe about a quarter of an inch right now. Might be hard to tell in this video. But now what we're going to do, now that we have a nice uh, surface here, we are now going to uh, cut this in half and then we'll have two strips and then we're going to get those, we're going to thin those back on the Gilbert sanding disc on the drill press to around uh, 40 thousandths, which is about one millimeter. All right, now I'm going to go run this on my bandsaw and cut it in half. All right, I just split the uh, uh, log on the uh, bandsaw. They're around a hundred, little over a hundred thousands thick right now. And I'm gonna bring them down to uh, probably close to 40 on this uh, sanding disc here. Okay, we are now down to final thickness. These are now at 40 thousandths, or about one millimeter thick. And they are ready for the next step, which we're gonna uh, put some white veneer on the, the outside of each of these. And then uh, they'll almost be done. Well, just like we did before, we're gonna glue up our veneers onto our cowl, clamping cowl, and then put glue on it, put the middle piece on, next veneer, and tape it. So just like what you saw before, and I'm gonna do that now. All right, we're nearing our final step. So here is the uh, log now for our purfling half herringbone strip. Let's see if I can zoom in here. There you go, you can see the detail of that. So now our next step is, we're gonna cut this into strips about, uh, about two millimeters wide. And I'm gonna use my, my Preac miniature table saw to do that now. All right, we're gonna cut some of the strips now. There we go. Well, there we have it. All our uh, herring, half herringbone strips have been cut off those two logs. Got a total of um, 16. So enough for eight guitars if I use two in each uh, rosette. And guess what? We will be using these in a rosette uh, video coming up where we're going to implement all this stuff, our rosette tiles, the half herringbone strips here, and next uh, series will be on inlaying a rosette in the soundboard. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this series on building the half herringbone strips for your rosette. Uh, love to see what you come up with. Now, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.